Okay. So, oh, I forgot to introduce myself, I think. I'm Ellen Troxclair and uh, joined by moderating this esteemed panel. And uh, I worked in the Texas legislature before I ran for Austin City Council. Um, and oh my gosh, I cannot tell you, we got uh, on the Austin City Council probably, I probably got 10, um, well, 15, 15 like big open records requests every single month. Um, and I do think, I do understand your point about resources, Lexi. It's like, well, is my staff, does my staff do that? Do we have the, an IT team do that? Like who is responsible for responding to all of these requests? And another issue that I feel like needs to be addressed is it's, a lot of it is basically the honor system. You're, you're, you're relying on the elected official who you're requesting information from to turn over the documents that might get them into trouble. And so <clears throat> I could I could see through that process that it would be really easy for somebody um, to say, you know what, I don't want them to see this one. I'm going to delete it real quick. If it's not handled by if it's if it's handled by the elected official. And so I that that's uh, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your guys's um, feedback on that. But in the meantime, I want to turn to a reef because he has really seen firsthand experience in this issue from, from the judicial side of things and from um, the lawsuit side of things. And in, in his work, like I said, he's litigated many, many cases and is very involved in freedom of information issues. Um, so Arif, tell us why this is important from a constitutional perspective and, um, and kind of what you think we should be paying attention to. And while he's talking, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to drop them into uh, the comment, the, the chat button, click the chat button and uh, write your questions there. And at the end of this presentation, probably around 1240, 1245, we'll um, get to everybody's questions. So Arif, uh, take it away. Thank you. Um, you know, at the Institute for Justice, we litigate constitutional cases, property rights cases, First Amendment cases, economic liberty cases, educational choice cases. And we come across uh, the need to see what the government is actually doing um, in the context of exploring whether someone's rights are, or a broad array of rights are being violated. The Texas Public Information Act is indispensable. And it is indispensable precisely because it makes clear that the people subject to the laws of this state must be able to see what the government is doing, what they're actually doing and how they're doing it. Of course, the Texas constitution protects rights just like all the other 49 state constitutions where open record acts exist and state and local governments are created to protect those rights. Um, and the TPIA has to be viewed against this backdrop. The Texas Public Information Act was designed and tailored to ensure that people can see what their government is doing with the immense power that we give it, with all the resources, tax uh, revenue that we give it. Now, unfortunately, today in 2020, um, it's becoming clear to everyone that the TPIA has been flipped on its head. It's not something that just happened because of the pandemic, but the events of the past seven months have served to lift the veil on the inexcusable gutting of the TPIA and the, the real world effect that that has on, on Texans' ability to hold their government accountable, to see if people's rights are being violated, and just their ability to know, uh, you know, whether they can properly inform themselves before going to the ballot box to see if the people entrusted with carrying out uh, you know, the government's powers and, and, and bending the levers of a government power should be given another chance. And so originally intended and enacted the TPIA, and I'll just pull a quote from, from, the, from the act, says that each person is entitled to complete information, complete, about the affairs of government and the official acts of public officials, end quote. And it also says that the government does not have the quote, right to decide what is good for people to know and what is not good for them to know. But in practice, unfortunately, the TPA has turned into a tool that helps the government avoid providing information. And this flipping of the statue on its head ignores the original intent and the purpose. And this has really happened on two fronts. And both of these fronts require just robust legislative action to remedy. And to be clear, the, the time is now, because I think now you get the sense that everyone uh, can see that in, in an emergency, you want to know what the government is doing. That's when it's exercising powers that are reserved for extreme times and the powers are broad and it's important that we see what's going on. So one of the big problems with the TPIA is structural. 
over many years, uh, you have a, a statutory architecture where this administrative process that's baked into it, uh, it the TPA creates an administrative process that a government entity can invoke repeatedly with every single PIA request uh, for information it receives that allows it to not disclose information by claiming that exceptions apply. And they kick off a letter to the AG's office and the requester has to wait and they wait and they wait. Um, and abusing this administrative process has little to no consequences. And to be clear, I've done open records requests with local governments, with state uh, agencies, and it's almost reflexive sometimes that this is the response. In other words, the response is not to provide the information. And again, the TPA makes clear that this information belongs to the public. It's presumed to be public. Withholding it is the exception. But because of this administrative process that's baked in, with a lack of consequences, no statutory penalties, you have the government just routinely using it as a matter of course. And so it's a low cost way for them to avoid complying with open records requests. You see this on full display now during a pandemic, um, especially because they can actually add on to this by saying, well, we're technically closed too. We have a skeleton crew, uh, which the AG's office can deem a skeleton crew. And people working from home apparently is a skeleton crew, despite the fact that we have Zoom and internet and you know electronic records. By contrast though, there is no parallel process for an individual Texan or a member of the media or a blogger or a member of uh, a group of neighbors to, to enforce a TPIA request when the government doesn't wanna give them information with such a low cost approach. Like maybe just going to a justice of the peace and filing uh, a really inexpensive action and, and getting a hearing immediately and getting your information. Because this is not an, an open records law, it's a public information law. And the legislature made clear in 95 that information is much more broad than records. It's held in all sorts of ways and the, the government has to provide it when it's requested. In fact, even if it's not requested, the government has, to, you know, has the ability just to put it out there without waiting for a request. But because there's no parallel process for individuals to enforce the statute's promise, and they're just stuck kind of waiting with this administrative process, it's very easy for the government to use with no parallel process for an individual to use to get a ruling. They just sit and wait. Now, of mm -hmm. course, if you have resources, you can hire an attorney and file an original action in court, but then you're incurring expensive filing fees, attorney's fees. And what has been shown to happen, and this is not just with the TPIA, but with other types of uh, statutes that we've uncovered, especially in civil asset forfeiture, when you're trying to get people's property back because it was taken by law enforcement with no arrest or no conviction. What happens in, in that context is you'll get property back and they'll say, just drop the case. You don't get your attorney's fees because we gave you your property right before the judge ruled. Well, this is exactly that dynamic takes place under the TPIA. If you have the gall to stand up to the government, hire a lawyer and get the information that you're seeking in court, you have a winning argument. But right before the judge rules, the government says, you know what, I know we've been using taxpayer money uh, to withhold information, to fight you in court and not give you information, but we're just gonna give it to you now. So you don't get any attorney's fees because we think we're gonna lose. You're out of luck, you're, you're out attorney's fees. And so they've, they've basically, uh, you know, made the attorney fee provision of the TPIA largely unenforceable. Uh, the federal government has fixed that at the federal level. Texas, uh, at the legislature, uh, fixed that a couple sessions ago. The governor did not sign it. The second big problem with the TPIA, if I move away from the structure, which is you need to have the government and the individual at a minimum on equal footing. And so the structural problem is it's very easy for the government not to comply and to use these processes to just delay, delay, and not disclose and all the costs are on the individual, there's no parallel option for an individual to easily enforce the TPIA. But substantively, there's also big problems with the TPIA if you just read it. There are hundreds and hundreds of exceptions. The TPIA has been larded with so many exceptions, uh, sometimes lobbied for by governmental entities or lobbied for by politically connected interests that rely on the government in some capacity, whether for profit because they sell things to the government or otherwise. If you pull up the TPIA and control F search, the words accept or exception, you'll find that those words appear 363 times, which should shock everyone if they read the very first part of the TPIA, which I quoted earlier. And so the events of the past seven months have come, of course, with much frustration and concern about our constitutional architecture. 
the separation of powers clause in the Texas Constitution has been wholly ignored. And as has the prohibition in the Texas Bill of Rights that prohibits the suspension of laws, including the TPIA, unless the legislature uh, does so. In other words, the executive branch has unilaterally, in some cases, suspended aspects of the law. You can't do that. And to properly hold your government accountable when these things are happening, you have to know what the government is doing. And when parts of the TPIA are just being wholly ignored during an emergency to such a broad and pervasive extent. It is time for the legislature, and we're happy to have leaders that have worked on the TPIA in various sessions to try to address some issues that bubble up. But what we have at this point is a statute that is wholly divorced from its original intent, from the original promise enshrined in the TPIA, and it's created a playing field which is so uneven you cannot step onto it in a public uh, information act context and say that the people are now on equal footing with their government. That requires serious recalibration because it's at odds with what the constitution promises the individuals uh, in terms of protecting their rights and what the TPIA has promised equally echoing that to allow that to happen by keeping your eyes on the government and being able to know what they're doing. And so those are the two main things, big picture that the legislature should approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, thank you for laying that out so so well for us, for us to really understand um, the depth of the problem, but also the structural uh, inadequacies of it. And I, I, I just want to reiterate your point about local governments uh, or in, any governments kind of being able to use those exceptions and um, send a letter back and say, sorry, we're not going to respond to this open records request under this exception. And then you have to, it goes into a state process and the AG's office and you know, it's a whole big web that really you have to have the time and resources that someone like Institute for Justice or Texas Tribune has in order to get in any information. And, and me, just normal citizen Ellen Troxclair, under our constitution should have the same right to that information. Um, but the way that the law is in place now prohibits me from realistically being able um, to get information that that I'm entitled to, and 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 ultimately, what it does is enable corruption. I mean that that it, we are with without those safeguards in place, and that the whole purpose of these open government um, laws is that so we don't have corruption in our ele in our elected governments, and so it it, it is um, really scary. 